Happy Sabbath, Church. Please join me in response to reading for the call to worship. All glory be to God. With joyful and thankful hearts, we gather to worship our Lord. Praise his holy name. We come with our songs, prayers, and gifts to worship our Creator. All glory be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
help us as believers to live a life focused on Christ as the stewards of our temple, time, talents, and treasures, which all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Why is it garage sale? Guess what? It's your story time. But first, could you please help us collect the children's offering? Jesus loves you no matter 
please forgive me and come into my heart. Amen. And Jesus is in your heart. And you know what? When you have exciting news, don't you want to tell somebody? Like, do you get ever get a new toy? And you just want to tell your brother, wow, I love my new toy. Or maybe you got a new puppy like Miss Danella did not too long ago. And you just want to show pictures on your fancy phone. No, you know, there you go, <laughs> You want to show them pictures and you want to talk about how exciting it is to have a new puppy. Well, that's just what it is when Jesus comes into your heart. You want to share it with everybody. Let me see if I can show you about this. Okay. So let's say that this jar is you, okay? And let's say that in this jar, or as the French say, carat, <laughs> is Jesus' love. So when you ask Jesus into your heart, he fills your heart up with love, doesn't he? But what happens? You're so excited that you just have to, you just bubble over and you just want to tell other people. Well, this worked at home. We'll see what happens. You just want to tell other people that Jesus loves them too. Well, maybe it's working too well. <laughs>
thank you for the gifts that you bring that make worship such an experience. Not an experience that we observe, but one that we participate in. And that's really what the walk of the Lord is about. Walking with Him, experiencing Him, not knowing about it, but engaging with Him and being with Him. I turn it on. <laughs> this happened last time. And it happened again. So let me start all over again. It's Thank you, choir. <laughs> Because the music engages our souls and our hearts and we sing with you. And that's what worship's about. It's not to sit back and watch and be awed, although we are. It's to join in with this time of worship together. Jerry, thank you for your continued leadership and blessing. And it's a joy to be with each of you. And maybe if I come here a couple more times, I'll figure out how your microphone works. <laughs> James says in James 5, Are any among you suffering? They should keep praying about it. And those who have reason to be thankful should continue to sing praises to the Lord. Are any among you sick or weary? You should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Prayers offered in faith will heal the sick and the weary, and the Lord will make them well. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you might be healed. For the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and wonderful results. Hear those words again. If you're in trouble or suffering, don't stop praying. If you're sick and weary, struggling with brokenness in spirit or relationship, ask for help. Call the elders to join you. Confess to each other the sin that separates and divides. For then the prayer of the righteous Remember the passage I shared with you last Sabbath from Psalm, which one? Eight. Very good. You were, you were listening. David, looking up at the starry heavens, says, When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you set in place, who am I that you care about me? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who are we that you care about us? Created on a purpose, for a purpose. Created to be the trustees of everything that has been made. More than that, we're called by name. He knows our frame. He who made us knows that we're dust and knows how much we can bear. As the Father has compassion on his children, Psalm 103, so the Lord has compassion on those who love him and revere him. For he knows how we're formed, and he remembers that we're dust. And occasionally, dust needs some help. Dust needs that strength that only comes from outside of us to guide us and to direct us. The words of scripture that were offered this morning from Matthew, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Do you hear what he's saying? Come and let's do an exchange. I'll take your yoke, you take mine. Mine's easy. Because it's a yoke that we wear that is a yoke of trust, absolute confidence that God's got this. He's got our back. He's got our future. He's got our past. He's got all. Do you know, sometimes we long for our old yoke. And while we'll take his for a little while, sometimes we just sneak back and we pick up that yoke of burdens and worries because it's what we're used to. It's hard sometimes to leave it the Lord and to trust him. Because as Gordon Dahl says, we're a people who tend to worship our work, work at our play, and play at our worship. Self-determined, self-directed, such that faith is only about trusting God for the things we can control, like hurricanes, earthquakes, wars, and death. The rest, I got it. He says, 
Are you burdened? Are you heavy laden? Do you find yourself weary dealing with the issues of life, be it physical health, relational health, or spiritual health? Come to me. I will set it right. <laughs> Oftentimes we neglect the words of Christ and the invitations to experience the new life that he offers us. The new life that is empowered by whom? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one who quickens our hearts. The Holy Spirit's the one who speaks to us and says, this is the way, walk ye in it. The Holy Spirit is the agency of God's presence in earth today. And some people say, the Holy who? How does that work? And so often we kind of tuck it away in a corner, in a theory, in a, in a, in a context or a doctrine, and the Holy Spirit's not going to say, let me have it. Let me live with you and let me quicken your footsteps and enliven your hearts. Let me bring those blessings that will help you truly be alive and experience the abundant life the Lord brought to us. We have neglected to enter into the signs of the covenant. You know, what are the signs of the covenant? The Abraham covenant, the first one was what? What was the sign of the covenant? Circumcision. A physical sign. This is what a, what a sacrament or a sign is of covenant. It's that physical and outward sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Circumcision, physical and outward. What's the inward and spiritual grace? Take your Bibles right now and look at Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16. And I'll hurry up and get there to make sure that was the right one.
Jesus on that Monday, Thursday evening, that Passover, took the bread that was symbolic of that man and said, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you. Sprinkle it on the doorposts of your heart that we might show, number one, our relationship, but we might be reminded of what Christ has done. Is communion a theoretical experience or is it participatory like your volcano care? Where's Karen? And I think that's a wonderful thing. I was hoping that we kind of go a little higher. I'll coach you on some lead dynamic. If you don't want to be children, sorry, come and we'll talk. Communion is for the body to come together. They celebrated that. In communion, they would have their agape feast. It was a remarkable experience. The whole community it wasn't a private thing. Although many times I've taken communion to people in a home and in hospital. What does it do? What does participating in communion remind you of? Rededication. Rededication. Reminds you of his sacrifice, of your commitment. What's it like when you sit down with friends and have a meal? Reminds you of your belonging together. And this is that holy. We don't believe that the communion in itself is efficacious as our Catholic brothers and sisters do, but that's okay. It reminds us of that great arc of salvation history that by sharing in it, you're part of it today. Give me another, give me another ceremony or a sacrament that we celebrate. Hmm? Washing, feet. Washing feet. What's that symbolic of? Hmm? Is it about our service? Let me tell you, foot washing has been a real challenge in the Adventist church. Because we've not understood it. Foot washing is about taking that opportunity with the one who knows me well and knows me best. And it's another baptism. It's a mini baptism of you watching away all the dirt that I pick up as I walk through life is that cleansing again in preparation as we come to the table. <coughs> Give me another one. Sabbath. Sabbath. What's Sabbath about? Oh boy. <laughs> Dr. Sickler asked a question in Sabbath school that he shouldn't have asked, and then he closed Sabbath school. We didn't have a chance to debrief it, but it was a good question. We'll talk about Sabbath at some point. What is Sabbath about? Who's made for Sabbath? Uh, no, Sabbath is made for us. You're not made for Sabbath. Sabbath is God's gift to keep you in relationship, in worship, with friends, with family, in service. Sabbath keeps us more than we can keep it. Sinful person keeping a holy day doesn't edit. it. A holy day keeping a sinful person. That works. Give me another one. You did pretty well. Let's go to the first one. Marriage. Marriage, marriage yes. Marriage. marriage as we join people together. Boaz and Ruth. Remember how he took his cloak and covered Ruth? Symbolic of the two becoming one. Which is such a wonderful metaphor and example of what it's like to be complete for the Lord said, let us make mankind in our image. So he just made a bunch of men, right? No. No. He made a man. And then he improved it and made a woman. <laughs> but both men and women are in God's image. God is not a guy. God is not a woman. God is both perfect. And marriage is called a symbol. Give me another one. Baby dedication. Sorry? Baby dedication. Didn't hear. Baby dedication. So the dedication in the temple, when, when Jesus was at 12 years of age, he went and completed his, his, his uh, if you will, they call it the bar mitzvah now, but at birth, the dedication of the child. Okay? That is another. Presenting and coming to the Lord and saying, thank you, Father. Help me to be a better, best man. Okay, 
Let's go to the front of the alphabet because we're going to be here a long time if you don't get this one. <laughs> Anointing. <laughs> Saul was king. What did they do? They anointed him. They set him aside for the office. Read the um, 133rd Psalm about the anointing. How the oil of Aaron drips down through his beard. When they anointed in those days, it wasn't using a perfume like we do today, where it's, 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 it's a vapor alcohol base that quickly dissipates. Barb, do you wear perfume? Brian, what kind of perfume is it? Uh -huh. <laughs> It was fun to the pastor asked me that question. <laughs> when I was dating Kathy many, many years ago, the perfume du jour was Charlie. And whenever I smelled Charlie, I thought of her. The anointing on Aaron, the anointing on Saul, when the woman anointed Christ's feet, that didn't just disappear. That stayed on you forever. Imagine what it was like when he went to the cross. When they're beating him and he's sweating drops of blood, it awakened the fragrance of that, that oil and the fragrance. He smelled that. There was one fragrance of grace. And as they call us to anoint, what's the purpose of the anointing? Just to smell different? It's to come forward and to say, Lord, I'm bringing to you all that I am and all that I need. Grace me with your presence. In a special way, fill me and help your Holy Spirit to walk with me as I go through life. We think about the one who's righteous and caring and guiding. The one of the signs of the covenant where we're asked to come and to present ourselves. Remember how Jesus said, in fact, he's a nice thing, he said, any of you thirsty, <coughs> come drink. Participating in these signs of the covenant doesn't require that you be perfect, that you dress well, or that you have this or you have that. He just says, if your heart is quickened, come. All the wood came when he fed the thousands upon the hillside. He didn't condition their reception of that. Just if you're hungry, we have so partitioned and partitioned off the elements of the church that we find ourselves in little walls, wondering, okay, what can I do? How can I experience my Lord in a life, in a, in a lively and an experiential daily with a walk with Him? Because the signs of the covenant are the real encounter with his saving, healing, transforming grace. It's the intersection where you present yourself in all of your anxiousness, in the midst of your worries, doubts, guilt, and shame. You come to the Lord of Lords and experience the power of acceptance. It's where your life comes into power of confessing your need, knowing that God wants to hear it. In fact, he knows it before you say it. You say, Lord, help me. That's what we're talking about. Oftentimes, anointing is that which we can compartmentalize to that point of life in health care where you're on your deathbed. Medicine can't fix it, let's call the pastor. And the pastor comes in to anoint, which is more like last rites than it is first rites. Brothers and sisters, faith is never something you turn to when science and medicine give up. Faith is something that walks with us every part of the way. We don't only anoint in extremis. We anoint in all of life. Lord, heal me. Lord, touch me. Lord, save me. The anointing is not mysterious, hocus-pocus stuff. It is simply coming and saying, Father, here am I, publicly with my family, publicly with my church, saying, I need some help. And no one knows except you and God what that help or what that request is. The elders, Elder Vince and I will, will, will offer this anointing for you today. Some morning, why would you for a whole church? Is it something you do private? 
Yes, you can do it, Charlie. But I think we have to take anointing out of the closet, as it were, and celebrate the gift that God has given us because as a congregation, there are many who are hurting. As a church family, your doors were almost closed. Is there a need for healing corporately? Yes. Is there a need for healing, whatever that might be in your life, personally? Are you weary with worrying about the house, trying to sell it? Are you struggling and worrying about health and what's going on and you're afraid? God doesn't say, got it out. Show me how strong you are. Be a man. Or one. I had a kidney stone in 1990. I've had three of them. So I had this, let's call this one 1997. We were on our way to do some fundraising for the college. And I told Kathy, I was driving, and I pulled the car over the side of the road in Far Hills, and she said, what are you doing? I said, you have to drive. So she said, okay. And she said, where are we going? I said, she said, I don't know how to get to the Fritchies. She said, we're not going there. We're going to the hospital. I had something that was wrong. I didn't know what it was. And I got to the hospital. I sat, and they gave me a wheelchair, and I was doing the dance that would never stop. And the ER person said, what's wrong? I said, I got this pain. He said, oh, you look like a kidney stone. I said, okay, that's fine. Three heart attacks came in by squads. Heart attacks trump kidney stones, or kidney stones trump heart attacks? Heart attacks trump kidney stones. So it was midnight now before I got any hope of getting the Kickaboo Joy Trees to feel better. <laughs> they wheel me into x-ray, because they want to do the dye and the contrast. They come in. Going in extra, I'm still writhing in pain. And Heidi, one of the students at Casey and Avon, was doing her clinical rotation in radiology that night. They push this thing in, and you know, what, what does hydrostatic pressure do to rocks? I became a rolling stone. <laughs> and as it rolled, I cried out. Heidi had just gone behind the screen, you know, where they say, take a deep breath, don't move. She got to the take a deep breath, and I went, ah! What did Heidi do? Did she say, wait, you're the college president, you're more man, suck it up! No. She didn't say, no, it won't take long. She left her post, and she came right up, and she said, hold my hand, I won't leave you. Pain, fear, separate us. And Heidi did what she needed to do. You can't teach that. You can only catch that. She said, hold my hand. God says to you today, <clears throat> if you're struggling and you're feeling separated because of the worries and the burdens of your heart, and you're waking up at 3 in the morning and you can't go back to sleep because something's on your heart, bring it to Jesus. He wants it. That's what healing is about. Pastor Jerry and or Pastor Vince and I will, will stand here and in front of you ask you to come on this side or this side. And as you come before us, pretend this is Walgreens, okay? You know how you're not supposed to crowd where you hear the other person's medical information? Keep the line there, and then one by one come before us. And we will ask this, this question of you. What is it that you seek healing for today? And you will tell us in confidence. We will pray, and we will anoint your forehead with a balm. It's, it's a fragrance that we use in the medical center for our anointings, and I've used it all my life. And then we invite you to go back. You've thought about this for a week. If you were here last Sabbath, you're aware of this opportunity. There's no compulsion. There's no, everybody's got to come. This is for you to come before the Lord. But let me say this. Your coming before the Lord is also a witness. 
It's a witness saying, I need the Lord. You know that wonderful song? You'll have to have Joanne Gilkey sing here someday too, but people need the Lord. And that's what we're saying today. And by the mark of the oil, the balm on your forehead, we're simply saying, Lord, pay attention here. Not that he doesn't, but there's a special focus. Because you have come, you have sought, and you have received the promise of his blessing. Take my yoke upon you. For my burden is light. He says to us, you have not because you ask not. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Always be full of the Lord, of the joy of the Lord. I say it again and rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which passes all understanding. And His peace will guard and guide your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul, or the Jude, um, closed his book with these words. And I commend each of you, those of you who've been in prayer this day, those of you who've come forward, those of you who have brought to Jesus the thing that besets your heart. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you without blemish before the presence of his glory, with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and evermore. May his spirit be amongst you, his healing be upon you, and his grace within you. Amen. Amen.
Now unto him who is able to present you faultless before the throne of grace. Unto him who is only wise, unto him who is only grace, unto him who is our Lord and Savior. May you keep your faith and walk with him each day. May you go forth from this service trusting that what he has promised will happen, for he is faithful, that you seek and he will be found, you ask and it will be given. May you in turn give and bless others in the course of your life. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.